in my career has played a massive role. Like I, I used to live here, I used to study here. Um, so actually my entire DJ career sort of, like it all began here, it kicked off. I used to play quite a lot in a club in the center. Played there so many times and that was actually just the start of my career. That That is the reason why people got to know me. It was people from Ghent. Um, so, and it's a beautiful city. Um, I love being in Ghent. I miss it every single day because I live in Brussels now. So um, obviously like, Ghent is a place very close to my heart. Well, I think the entire country of Belgium has played like a massive role, like back in the days, 80s, 90s, for the culture and the rave culture. Um, also Ghent. But like I didn't really realize it was such a big thing until like quite recently, like these last couple of years, because you know I started DJing more, started digging deeper in, in, in music and musical uh, culture and history. It's pretty cool, you know, because now especially like bonsai music, it exists for 25 years, and I am 25, and I just got the opportunity to make a remix or rework of one of their tracks. So it's so cool to see that everything is kind of coming back, and that you know modern people and and DJs alive nowadays, they just have such a big sense of appreciation for everything that's old and you know the, the old stuff it's our history so we should be proud of it so much about techno music and especially like the strip music it's like it's it's quite dark it's it's melancholic you know it's, it's quite loopy like you can get lost in a track that doesn't contain a lot of elements and you can experience much more emotions in that kind of music like be it a happiness or sadness or whatever excitement um, then you would experience listening to like happy music that just like hands up in the air, yeah, party hearts. To me, it's it's it, it's not so interesting. I mean, when I, when I look at myself in producing, I, I always just do like less is more. I love strip music. I don't like to use a lot of elements. So even if you have like a whole variety of options, I mean, it, it, I guess it gets kind of difficult to just pick out the right ones. Uh, but as soon as you figured it out, I mean, you can just go from there. I try to look for like the one thing, the one like the hook of the track. And as soon as I found it, I just try and work with that. But I won't like look for lots of other layers to add. I mean, as soon as I've got it, I will try and, and make the best out of, of that one instead of just keep on layering and layering and adding more and more and more elements. Um, so that's what I mean when I say that I keep it very stripped. I see myself more as a DJ. Yeah, because um, I started as a DJ as well. I didn't start as a producer. So I'm not like the, the, the classic studio nerd that's like always on his laptop making tracks and then at some point gets them signed to a big label and starts playing big stages. I mean, for me, it was the other way around. I started in the clubs. I'm always nervous. Always in the beginning of every single year. It can be like, okay, if it's like a big festival like Awakenings, you're very nervous. If it's like a very small club with 300 people, still nervous, less nervous. It, does, it doesn't really go away, but I mean, as soon as you make like one transition and you see the crowd and if the crowd reacts well, it gives you just so much energy and confirmation that you're doing well. And it's not like I get super confident. You will never see me like dancing behind the booth, like, yeah, come on, people, come on, dance with me. Like, I'm, I'm not like that. I'm just like, one of the one of the crowds, you know, just on the other side of the booth. On the other side of everything, they can be seen and everything can come. I think like the, the golden rule is to um, respect the track that you're playing. Is it your own? Is it, is it a track from someone else? I mean, if it's someone else's track and there are two long breaks and then two drops, I mean, he or she made the track with the intention to wait until the second drop has passed before you mix in another track. So I let the tracks play for as long as I can, like beginning to start. And like, of course, like I mix in, say, about two minutes. 
but I, I just try to respect the original track a lot and not fool around too much with effects because I have like this Pioneer RMX 1000 that I use for additional effects. But I try not to go too crazy and just like fully respect the way the track was intended to be played. There's, There's nothing, nothing in the world, world which compares to this. I didn't expect this to be my life, so I'm just very grateful and I'm just so happy that I, I love it so much. And of course I have bad days, you know, but in general I really, I do love it so much and it gives me so much energy. And I think, especially, I mean, I'm playing techno music. I'm not a pop star, I'm not Rihanna, I'm not Beyonce, like I'm playing techno. I mean, I, I was born in the club, you know? So why would I feel better than anyone else? We're all just ravers, having a good time together, having a laugh together, having a drink together, like, it should, it should stay like that. And that's the beauty about, you know, the, these kind of venues and, and the type of music, the techno. It's just like everybody loves each other and respect each other. And I don't want to be like an idol of someone. I mean, I'm like you, like anyone else. I'm just a human being who's lucky enough to, you know, do what she loves a lot. Once. 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 Once.